What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 60 of The Real Rap Show, Eddie Nash and the Wonderland Story. Now, before we get this episode started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to The Real Rap Show since day one. Everyone in the comments and also everyone that gives me great feedback about the show. Thank you to all the new subscribers and everyone that is following me on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so y'all can stay notified whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Now let's get this shit started. Eddie Nash was born on April 3rd, 1929. Eddie Nash ended up becoming a nightclub and restaurant owner in Los Angeles. When Eddie was in his 20s, his family owned 48 hotels in the 1950s. He began working as a stuntman and actor. In 1952, he had a small role in an episode of the Western TV series, The Cisco Kid. His character's name was Nash. In the mid-1960s, Eddie opened up a Frank stand called Beef Chuck on Hollywood Boulevard. By the mid-1970s, Eddie opened up a few restaurants and nightclubs in Los Angeles. Eddie owned the Kit Kat Strip Club, the Paradise Ballroom, the Starwood Club in West Hollywood, the Odyssey Disco, Ali Baba's, the Seven Seas Club, and the Sold Out Club in Hollywood. Now, all these clubs that Eddie owned, they attracted drug dealers, pimps, gamblers, women working the streets, stick-up kids, gay people, and celebrities. Now, hold on. I want to fast forward real quick, and I'm going to bring it back. But Eddie's clubs sound like it had the same crowd as the famous Tunnel Nightclub in New York City. Now, if you're not familiar with the Tunnel Nightclub, on this channel, I did a story on the legendary Tunnel Nightclub. But inside the tunnel was everyone that was a part of the grimy underworld. There was the biggest drug dealers in there, the best looking women, the most notorious stick-up kids was in there, the creme de la creme of the shoplifting game, the best credit card scammers, rappers, movie stars, and ball players was inside the tunnel. And you had to be somebody to be there. Eddie's clubs had that tunnel crowd, so I can imagine what that looked like back then and being a hundred times more dangerous. Now back to the story. One night at one of his clubs, Eddie met John Holmes, who at the time was a popular adult film star who went by the name Johnny Wad. Eddie and Johnny became really good friends. Eddie also knew Johnny from seeing him in adult films. So Eddie would take Johnny to all of his clubs so that everyone could see that he was with Johnny Wad. And it was a real easy way for Eddie to get all kinds of women because all the women knew Johnny from seeing him in adult films as well. Everything was going good until around 1981 when Eddie's friend Johnny got addicted to free basin cocaine and was fired from the adult film industry due to lack of performance, if y'all know what I mean. Now, there was a drug lord in Los Angeles at the time named Ron Lonius or Ron Leno, if I'm pronouncing that right, who was the leader of a gang called the Wonderland Gang. Now, let me tell y'all a little bit about this Wonderland Gang. They was a team of petty thieves and robbers that was cocaine addicts that lived in a house on Wonderland Drive. And what John Holmes would do, he would take the stuff that the Wonderland gang stole from people's house or whatever they shoplifted from stores over to Eddie's house to sell or trade for cocaine. Eddie had so much coke that they called Eddie the Cocaine King. The Wonderland gang consisted of Ron, his wife Susan, Billy Deverell, Barbara Richardson, and Joy Miller. Now, this nigga Johnny owed this guy Ron thousands of dollars from getting coke on credit. Ron would give Johnny large amounts of coke because he knew Johnny was a porn star, he made money, and Johnny always paid his debts. But Ron did not know 
that this nigga Johnny then got fired and he's still coming back and forth getting coke on credit. Now, this dude Ron ends up finding out that Johnny isn't working for the porn industry anymore and he tells Johnny, if you don't give me my money, I'm going to kill your ass. And he gives Johnny a deadline to pay back the money. And Johnny was scared to death. So he made up a plan with a few of the members of the Wonderland gang to rob a home of someone that he knew. And that home belonged to his friend, Eddie Nash. Johnny told them that the home had money and jewelry inside. So the plan was set. On the morning of June 29th, 1981, Johnny went to Eddie's house to visit Eddie. And in the process of Johnny being inside of Eddie's house, Johnny unlocked the back door of the house so the Wonderland gang could easily gain access into Eddie's home. A few hours after Johnny left the house, the Wonderland gang members got into Eddie's house and held Eddie and his bodyguard at gunpoint. Two of them disguised as police, they stole drugs, money, and jewelry. At some point in the robbery, one of the gang members' gun went off and Eddie's bodyguard got grazed in the face. They told Eddie to get on his knees and beg for his life. But inside, Eddie Nash knew that Johnny had set him up because Johnny was there that morning. The next day, one of Eddie's friends from the club told him that they seen Johnny wearing some of his jewelry that was stolen in the home invasion. Now check this out. Two days after Eddie got robbed, Ron, Barbara Richardson, Joy Miller, and Billy Deverell was bludgeoned to death at their home on 8763 Wonderland Drive. Now Ron's wife Susan was barely alive, but she survived it. The LAPD reported that when they arrived at the house, it was the bloodiest crime scene that they had ever seen. Eddie wasn't arrested for the murders, but word around town was that Eddie paid three dudes to do it. Now, Johnny was on the run, but Eddie chose not to chase after Johnny because he knew that Johnny was already scared enough. But this dude, Johnny, told his wife that he was forced to set up Eddie and that he was there when Ron and them was killed inside their house and that the gunmen held him at gunpoint and made him watch the murders as they happened. Johnny ended up getting four months in jail for not identifying the killers. While in jail, John Holmes caught AIDS and died from it after he came home from jail. But the LAPD had nothing on Eddie, so they searched his apartment looking for evidence and found money and cocaine. Eddie Nash was arrested and sentenced to eight years, but Eddie was so rich and popular while he was in jail, he had someone bribe the judge with $100,000 in cash. The judge accepted the bribe and Eddie only ended up serving just two years and was released. But in 1990, Eddie Nash was tried again, this time for planning the Wonderland murders. The trial ended in a hung jury. After the trial, Eddie Nash told someone that he beat the case because he bribed one of the jurors with $50,000 in cash. People in LA said that Eddie Nash was a nasty, grimy dude. At his clubs, he would go in the bathroom and make duty and wouldn't wipe himself. He would find a woman in the club and offer her cocaine to lick out the duty that he didn't wipe. The feds was on Eddie's back for years, and in 2000, they finally got him on RICO charges and money laundering. After cooperating with the feds, he was sentenced to four and a half years and a $250,000 fine. Eddie Nash was now in his 70s and suffering from emphysema and several other health issues. On August 9th, 2014, Eddie Nash died at the age of 85. Until this very day, the Wonderland murder case has never been solved. Now hit the like button because I want to share something with y'all. I just told y'all a story about someone that had an empire that crumbled because they did what? They brought the wrong person around them. The moral of this story is, in the life that we live in today, you got to be careful who you bring around your fucking empire. This is real shit. This happened years ago, but it's a lot of people getting backdoored and murdered today 
behind bringing the wrong person around their empire. Let's be clear. We got to be careful who we sharing vital and personal information with out here. You have to be mindful and careful who you are letting hear personal and vital information. Not the person that you're telling. Because nowadays, people bringing their homies and their girlfriends with them around you. And you telling them personal shit and they peoples is sitting there reading your whole book. That's what I'm saying. Once again, be careful and mindful who you are letting hear vital and personal information. It will crumble your empire. Real talk. Be mindful of who you are inviting into your home. People have company. They start drinking, playing music. A lot of y'all got these nice big homes. People start wandering off in back rooms and all of that. Stop letting people wander around your crib that you don't know like that. People get drunk before you know it, the back door getting left open. Real talk. Thank you for watching. It's your man Supreme, and you were just tuned in to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this was episode 60 of The Real Rap Show, Eddie Nash and The Wonderland Story. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so y'all can stay notified whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Follow The Real Rap Show on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. Y'all stay safe out there. Real Rap.